some scary sharp or sandpaper sharpening systems. I've got a piece of float glass here, which I procured from a glass producer um, up near where I work. He had this as a second laying around, so if you've got a glass cutter near you, maybe you could go up and it's much, much cheaper to ask them if they've got a second or a spare piece sitting around that, that somebody didn't pick up. Um, the same is with granite. Uh, a lot of times granite surfaces, you know, pro producers or cutters will have seconds laying around. You can ask them to check it for flatness, and most of the time they're very inexpensive. Um, I know uh, Woodcraft and some other retailers sell nice thick granite slabs or, uh, or marble slabs. Um, typically you see the granite, they're nice big and heavy, and they've been machined to a certain tolerance on the top, usually within several thousandths of an inch. Those are great. They're fairly inexpensive. I think I just saw one the other day for about $30. This concept is very basic. It takes these abrasives. I found these online. Uh, this is a full sheet abrasive. This is a 3000 grit sandpaper. They've got adhesive backed sandpapers. This is a little bit rougher grit. This is a 320. But they've got adhesive backed for most of the abrasives that they also have sheets. The sheets are easy, just cut them with a pair of scissors, um, a pair that you don't really care about, and then spray the back with a little bit of spray adhesive. Some people use water, but I've had mixed results with that in spraying the sheets with water because they tend to curl up, um, which sort of defeats the purpose of having this perfectly flat surface. The, the water is important though in the sandpaper technique, just as it is in the water stones, and the oil is to the oil stones, and then it keeps the surface free and clear of grit and your metal filings. Um, so once once you've adhered the sandpaper to the surface, the same goes for the rest of these techniques. You flatten your back, flatten your bevel, and you work on your sharp surface. Um, the sandpaper technique is easy because I've only got to have one piece of glass with several abrasives. Uh, it's easily transportable, although the glass is a little more difficult. Um, but you just adhere the sandpaper to the surface, and then I tend to scrape it off with this window scraper I got at Lowe's. Just a real simple process. Um, and it, it will quickly abrade the metal, as a lot of this sandpaper, this wet dry sandpaper, is intended for sanding metal. So it works really well. Um, and I can get a very polished surface on almost all of my tools using this method. To hone with this method, you can use buffing wheel compound just like you do with several other techniques. Um, I, you know, I've put this on a piece of cherry. I have a, a piece of cherry that I've flattened um, and then run the tool along that and the, the buffing compound does a great job polishing the tool. You can do the same thing on this glass sheet with just a plain piece of notebook paper uh, or, or uh, printer paper that you adhere to the surface. You put a little bit of the buffing compound onto the surface and it works just like a regular hone. Um, you can also use leather glued to a flat surface. Um, there are additional techniques that use this product. This one happens to be by Pinnacle, but there are several of them that use these honing films. This film basically adheres to the top of this aluminum channel, and then these are varying microns um, of grit thickness. This pack I got from Woodcraft has got several different um, finenesses of uh, of film. The one that's on here is a 0.15 micron um, and they get even more fine than that. But it's the same concept. Draw your tool over just like you would sharpening um, and it polishes the edge. It does a, a great job. This is a, a good tool. In order to put accurate bevels on new tools that I get or some of my chisels that I prefer to keep at exacting angles, I use a jig. Now, as I mentioned in a previous blog entry, a lot of um, professionals are a little wary of the jig in that it takes some of the skill out of sharpening. I do hand sharpen a lot of my tools, and I'll cover that technique as well as hollow grinding on the grinding wheel, uh, which I didn't bring to, the sh to this presentation today, merely because it's uh, already bolted down and plugged in. So, um, the, the, but the jig is great if, uh, if you're setting up a new tool to get that first angle on there. Uh, it makes it easier to find it when you're hand sharpening later on. Um, this one's by Veritas. This is the one I have a link to in a previous blog about sharpening. Um, it's a great tool. It's easy to put together and find angles. It's got 
this guide slides on the front and each of these angles are preset um, based on what you plan to do with with the chisel um, or the plain iron and once you hook this up you sharpen it over your surface basically it's got a wheel that rides along you fit your plane inside you got a chisel here you tighten it up and draw it across the surface of your of your sharpening uh, method that's a lot of these um, that are the manual method but there's nothing wrong with these I think they all actually put a very very good edge on the tool and through practice I've managed to make all of these work probably equally as well though some are much faster than others um, the sandpaper sharpening is extremely fast I found the DMT the do a sharp um, 10 by 4 plate that's new to me but I have found that it's extremely fast cutting as well another technique is using electricity this is on loan to me as is the trihone system this is a work sharp um, basically this spins around and you bring your tool in contact with this surface there's a set of jigs and some other items there's a wheel with some holes in it so as it spins sort of like the rims on a car it spins real fast you can see right through it this sits in place of this glass plate that's on here now and you can bring your chisel up underneath or your plain iron up underneath and you can see down through this spinning wheel to assure that you're doing to assure that you're making full contact with the wheel um, this technique I don't have a lot of practice in simply because I've never owned one before but I have been practicing with a little bit and we'll cover it in a video uh, should you choose to go this route it is very fast it's accurate I do have some concerns with the speed of the wheel as you know uh, the speed that this wheel travels changes as you go from inside to outside just like a record would um, so there are some compensations I'm, I'm wondering about there however it doesn't really seem to be too much of a factor um, I don't know that I would use this for honing but for uh, a first setup of a tool or a rough edge before I take it to one of these other methods it seems like a really good option they do have honing plates and honing film similar to the pinnacle aluminum channel <laughs> that seem to work very well um, although I do prefer hand honing some of these other tools I keep around the sharpening shop I've got this miniature grows square which works great say I put some nicks in the edge of this plain iron and go across and check first check the squareness of my tool and then say I need to take it to the grinder and peel off the edge because I've managed to snag a nail that I didn't properly check for so I put that on there strike a line across now I know where I've got to grind to I've got a, a flat reference surface which is referenced off the tool and I can grind right to that edge I feel that each of these techniques can work equally well with practice there's no reason to spend money on every single one of these watch the videos over the coming weeks and see which technique caters to your needs and your skill set and go with that one if you have any additional questions comments or concerns please email me at pulthouseworkshop at gmail.com. Check out the blog at www.pulthouse.com. That's P-O-L-T-H-A-U-S dot com. I've got a lot of other videos, some woodworking posts, some tool making posts on there. Please check it out. Uh, and I'm also on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel for Pulthouse Workshop. Check that out as well. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time on Pulled House Workshop.